everybody had never been the boys in the hood, but it's the foods in the hood, what we digest, what we drink, including drugs. How can a nine-year-old child find a heroin man, but the FBI can't find him? There's something wrong with that. Absolutely. Well, Brother Gregory, you've been on this path for a long time, you know, preaching health and living it. What is the problem with black leadership? It's almost as though they're not even... Wait, 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 wait let's back up. How can black leadership preach health when they don't know it themselves? Yes, well, they right. like black leadership understand health and know what to eat. Black leadership don't slip out to the mountaintop and get organic food. They eat the same food <laughs> that black folk folks are eating in the ghetto. <laughs> so why would they when they don't know what they say? They got just as many pickles in their cabinet. They go see just as many doctors. They might get a better quality of doctors. They got the same medicine. So it ain't like they know health. And if you look in the white community, the people that's talking health is not the ones that sell an automobile or talking about this or talking about that. That's a different movement altogether. And so they good at what they good at. But would I want to buy a car from a guy just because he's in NAACP or the Urban League? Not at all. If, 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 if I had a case of police brutality, I wouldn't go to the health food store. I would go to the big. Now, you can't separate a racist society that's prejudiced and segregated and treat blacks wrong. It also reflects in your food and your water and in your quality of hair. The question that we've never asked is if white companies are the only ones that make malt liquor, but malt liquor is only sold in black neighborhoods. It looked like somebody would have enough sense to say, oh, wait, hold it, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's in this malt liquor? It's a thing in there called manganese, and if you get too much manganese, it'll make you kill your mama. That, that's part of the relationship of violence. Lay it, make you hostile. Lay it, poison, hostile, uh, aggressive. Mercury, mercury. I mean, it's incredible. What we have in the neighborhood, there's an incident case that should be going on now in federal court in Dallas. Soda pop have a date on it, an expiration date. And when it gets past that date, the soda pop, the chemicals turn into a mild poison. Now, I don't believe the mild poison will kill you, but it turns into a mild poison. Right, poison nonetheless. Yeah, now, what they found out that some black folks and white folks that was working on it for Coca-Cola, they found out that Coca-Cola would take all of those expired Cokes out of the white stores, redate them in a, a warehouse in northern Dallas and send it to the black stores. Well, they told on it, and they got a lawsuit now. Now, is Coca-Cola the most trifling of the Fortune 500? I don't believe that. So, are the pharmaceuticals doing the same thing? Or uh, when that medicine is, like, outdated, do they take it out of the white pharmacies and send it to the black pharmacies? And if you was my doctor, and I've been taking my high blood pressure medicine for two years, and then, I, I mean, for two weeks, and I go back and my blood pressure has gone up, it's only natural that you think, as a doctor, I'm not taking the medicine. And when I tell you I am, now what you're going to do is give me a stronger one. Than what, and so you got all of that going. That happens in a white racist society. Can you imagine the Jews going to, 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 to pharmacists in a Nazi-controlled Germany and assume that somebody's going to be honest with them? Not at all. So let me ask you this. You know, it used to be a time when the church was a bedrock for our spiritual health. What is the problem with the church making the connection, or do you feel that connection? Wait, wait, oh, 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 oh. You, you keep asking questions like you just said. How many fat preachers do you know? Okay? How many? All of them are fat. Okay, so why are you going to bring that? How can... Look, if I came to your, your office and you was a doctor and your plants were dead, I'm going to hurry up and get out of there. <laughs> right. Okay. And so what I'm saying is, you know, you asking questions like you came here from another planet. What that church, I tell you what, the latest survey that she, the black folks in the ghetto that go to church have 8% less.
less crime in their family. 75% less drugs, so they good at what they do. But have you ever ate, you ever, you ever go to a funeral where a sister or brother died from high blood pressure, you could have eaten cancer, and after the burial, go back to the church to eat? <laughs> Give me a break. Mm. And so, you know, you can't go to people who's not aware. Look, I came through thinking good nutrition was whatever you liked, it was enough of it. And bad nutrition is when it ran out before you got enough. <laughs> Man, I'm born in 1932 where black folks would die. They had no money. And they would just say, Grandpa, we tried to get his barbecue formula. But he, didn't, he carried that to the grave. The barbecue form, the way he cooked pigs, the way he cooked cornbread. And so, you know, and then also you must remember when you go to the store, you get what you pay for. I, I, I said this to somebody the other day. I was traveling somewhere to do a speech. I was going in to get some bottled water. And the only thing was open said, Fool for less. You ever see those stores? Mm -hmm. Well, I said, you know, people, it's so crazy. We would never go and buy cheap gas for our car, okay? We would never go where it says, uh, Cars for less, we would suspect that something might be wrong with it, right? Right. And so, but as long as it's about food, and then what you have poor black folks, you know, we look for instant gratification. That's all poor people. You know, black men smoke half as many cigarettes as white men, but the chance of death rate from smoking cigarettes is twice as high uh, in the black community. Black men, black people are 12% of America's per, uh, population, 87% of everybody that should be on Kenny Dallas's machine. Mm. is African American. So being <laughs> sick is normal for us. Yeah, but look what they tell us. They say, well, the reason is I got to go to the same system that don't like me to find out what's wrong with me. Something wrong with that, right? Absolutely. And they tell me, too, well, what's wrong is... Black men don't go to the doctor to get examined, so it's so late. I said, okay, wait a minute, back up. Where do they go get examined in Africa? Hmm? Where's that? They prostate cancer ain't running rampant in Africa. Black men is 4% of America's population, 83% of prostate cancer death in America is black men. Why isn't that reflected in Africa if it's a black thing? Are you telling me white, hillbilly, grade school, dropouts, can't read, can't write, living in a trailer. Are you telling me they go get examined? Not at all. And so when you stop and think about black women, 6% of America's population, 98% of fibroid tumors, black women. And nobody said, wait a minute, hold it. Wait, wait, stop. One. But remember, this ain't nothing new. When Elijah Muhammad, I was one of the ones that was laughing. Say, no white women, no pork. I was like, <laughs> give me a break. And now we go through the black community and we see Muslims with no bumps on their face. 120 degrees in the summertime, they got on a suit with a bow tie, don't sweat. And we have them slowed up to say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, what are you all doing? What, what, how can, you didn't leave the community, how come you don't need beer or nicotine or, or cigarettes? What is this about? And, and so when you, you stop and think, when you rally behind food because it was the only thing you had, that nobody could tell you how to cook it. And it's hard to break that chain when people rally behind it. You never heard nobody when I was going to say, can nobody read like Milton? Can nobody cook barbecue or fried chicken <laughs> like Nelly? And then you start breaking that chain. I see it's been broken now because every time I go into Whole Foods, you see more and more African Americans. That's there. You see more and more African Americans just buying bottled water. And so, you know, but it takes a long time to turn that that, that, that train around. But it's working. I mean, if you go into health food stores in the black community in Atlanta, they're not going out of business. They got people coming in around the clock. And, and if you stayed open, they'd be coming in at night. So there's little by little people are beginning to find out that it might be, and I might have to pay a little bit more. Well, that's hard to do when you got a choice between 
eating your house and eating or cooling and eating, and you're going to pay 40 to 60% above markup to get food that's organically grown. And, but you get what you pay for. They got organic, one-fourth of all the pesticides in America is used on the cotton crop. So all at once now, you got people buying organic pillars that's made out of organic cotton, hmm. organic heat, organic socks, you know, or cotton shirts with all that poison in it. So all at once now, and now they, 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 uh, they uh, uh, hemp. Hemp cannot be used in America, grown in America, because there's a piece of it you can use for drugs. But one of the biggest imports in this country out of Canada is hemp, where they're making hemp clothing and, and what have you. So, you know, the thing is changing, but everybody at the bottom of the tolling pole is is going to get less of whatever the good thing is. The cars, I remember when I was a little boy, 99% of black folk couldn't afford no new car. So they get an old raggedy car, and, and the tires, I mean, how many black folks in the ghetto know about rotating your tires or oh, getting rid of them after they, when they wear the, they ride in the car until the tire go down and they don't have a spare. So then they got to go buy a used tire. So this is, this is, once you put in your head that you are poor and you are convinced by a system that you are poor mm. and thank God you're doing better than so-and-so, then they got you. They got you. In, in every aspect, what you think, what you buy, and of course, what you eat. Yes, uh -huh. Well, in closing, Mr. Gregory, tell us what you've been doing, you know, lately in, in, in this uh, field of fighting nutritional genocide in the community for the last three, four minutes. Well, all I do is tell people, look, here's what you have to do. The three causes of death in America. The number one cause is sleep deprivation. Get what you eat. That's the number one cause of death. The number two cause is dehydration, and the number three cause is lack of physical fitness. You know how many people that eat right that don't have time to do exercise? Mm. They got two jobs. And so consequently, when, when I go in and talk, I say, first, we got to look at stress. Stress is dangerous because you can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't taste it until it's too late. Well, what causes stress? Anger, fear, working on a job where you dislike the people because you see what they're doing because you're black and they're white and you bring that mess home. And, and so consequently, when you look at your liver and your kidneys, when you hold all that stress in the liver and the kidneys, the liver and the kidneys blow out. Uh, when you laugh, you don't use certain muscles that push against certain glands that cause them to secrete an oil that wipes out Negative stuff. That's why they say laugh is good medicine. When you angry and frown and bitter, you use certain muscles that push against certain glands that drops the gas in your body. That's poison. Mm. And so you got to go through the whole bit. You know, it's kind of interesting. Stanford University, one of the leading universities in the world, uh, they have a department of forgiveness. So, you know, that's what King and the, the movement was talking about. Forgive, forgive, forgive. And when you don't forgive, you hold things. Remember, the same God that invented the Germans invented the Jews. The same God that invented the Klan, invented the, 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 the blacks. The same God invented the slave master, invented the slave. So how are you going to like one and dislike another without violating God? Hmm. And so as we can throw this out and throw this out and get up and walk and get the proper rest and drink the proper amount of water, the body is 90-some percent water. Not Kool-Aid, lemonade, but I get instant gratification from drinking something sweet or eating something sweet or eating stuff spicy. And then, so all you got to do is put it out there. I smoke four packs of cigarettes a day, a fifth of scotch every day. My top weight was 365 pounds. And then all at once, when they told me cigarettes cause cancer, I stopped. Now, there's a whole lot of people stop if they can get the facts from people they believe. There's a whole lot of people that can. Well, just thank God I came through, I guess, through my mother and the, through my wife. I never needed a drug. So I'm, I'm born 1932. I went as high as you can go in show business, 25,000 miles a week back then. Never smoked a reefer in my life. Well, as much alcohol I was drinking, there wasn't no room for nothing else. <laughs> and so now when you stop and think about who would ever believe that this thing would get so wild, a white teenager living in rural America,
America is eight to three times more likely to use crack than a black living in a large urban city. Right. <laughs> you think the New York Times going to tell you that? Not at all. You think the Atlanta Constitution going to tell you that? So it looked like I'm doing all the bad stuff and they're doing all the good stuff. And, 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 and so consequently, once we start getting the proper rest and the proper sleep and the proper exercise, even what we're doing negative, it starts throwing the impurities off, and there's so much information out here now. And then another thing is the same food that I ate when I was a little boy didn't have hormones in it. Not at all. You got a lot of people now talk about free-range chicken. Uh, you got Colonel Sanders Kentucky Fried Chicken. They can't use the word chicken no more. They call it KFC because these chickens uh, that they raised what they call Frankenstein uh, chickens. They don't move. They grow them. they genetically engineered where they don't have no feet or no beak, anything they can't sell, or no skin. Mm -hmm. And so consequently, we're not aware of that. We, and people that isn't aware, they're still going to get it for their children. What, how does that affect my glands? Right. If I would have started smoking when I was a child, it's far more detriment than if I started smoking when I'm an adult or alcohol because my glands are developing, my organs are developing. And so I think it's beginning to turn around some. My biggest problem is going into grade schools and have to talk to young children. I don't even stop. How am I going to tell you as a six-year-old that what your mother is doing is killing you? <laughs> right. I'm not about to do that. That would tell you sugar is bad. White refined flour is bad. White rice is bad. Well, I'm, I'm not me. Because I, I, how are you going to convince somebody black that biscuits is something wrong with this? Instant grits, instant oatmeal, all the instant stuff make the nutrition. It's gone.